Today, I'm trying to get the diff in the Sailor 7 car. Hopefully this will work. This might be easier than we thought. Oh. Yes! Oh, we're done. So here's Dre's super clean FD, but, oh no! What? What happened? Oh no, that's not good. Dre, what did you do? So he was converting from the stock uh, sequential twin turbo setup to a single turbo setup, and they went a little ham when they were setting that up and driving it doing a lot of street pulls, and the engine blew. But it actually might end up being a good thing because now he's oversized studying his entire block, getting the Garage Life oversized stud kit, which will make it a lot more reliable, and he can make more power with less risk on the new engine. That's a good thing because he wants to drag race this, right? You're gonna drag race this thing? Yes. So, it's, an, it's a good thing, everything happens for a reason, I always tell myself that, and he wants to drag race this FD with an event coming up in Texas next year. One of my favorite super clean FDs. And, damn, right hand drive. So that is cool. I think this is gonna be one of the first official Garage Life Drag RX-7s. And yes, we will be going to Texas for his first competition. That is next year. Can't wait. But the whole point of this video is that I am doing something I did not think I'd be doing yet. And I'm kind of freaking out about it. With the practice car, the goal was always to get an angel kit on this car and absolutely the pro car for the three rotor. I'm trying to drift here, trying to send it. You need angle. I did not think I was gonna get an angle kit on the practice car this early, but oh my gosh. A package showed up yesterday and I'm still trying to process it all. I, I just, I have to show you. Bam, look at this. This is seriously insane. So let me let me backtrack a little bit. If you guys have been on the channel for a while, you guys saw the Kia Forte drift build. We teamed up with Martin and Steve to do all the custom crazy work on that thing. Martin also has an RX-7 FC and is completely obsessed with rotaries as well. And he's done a ton of custom work for his cars at their shop. He also is one of the main people that brought Part Shop Max to the US from Japan. And he was part of the engineering of the Part Shop Max Angel Kit, the full thing for the FC chassis. This, however, is that full kit, but he modified the arms and made them even longer for the setup that he was running on his FC. Fast forward to now, he's working on an entirely new setup. Now I get his old one. I'm freaking out. I didn't think I would get this as soon as I did. Anyway, it's here. This is about to go on the Sailor 7 car. Now because he did extend the arms quite a bit more, stock tie rods were not gonna work. But luckily I had these Mazatrix high rods. So this should be long enough to work with the arms and this entire setup. So yeah, the practice car is getting yet another insane makeover. I am so excited to start drifting with some massive angle. I've actually only ever drifted once in my entire life with an angle kit, and it was amazing. R7s in general have really, really bad stock angle. Long story short, I am so stoked to be getting this kit on my car. I, I can't believe it. Thank you so much to Martin. It's just another example of RH7 rotary peeps stitching with each other, having each other's backs. Martin actually makes, like I said, a ton of custom amazing parts for the FC chassis. So if you go on his Instagram, I will have that here. And his new company, OMD Parts, is who he is making the parts through. So yeah, I'm freaking out. Thank you, Martin. Let's get this on the car.
then take the spacers off, all of hers off, then the rollers off. That should give me access to the knuckle. Take all that out as well and just go from there. clip is where it all went wrong so we ran into some issues it is the next day right when I got one side of the angle kit fully installed found a problem my 326 power rims are 18 by 10.5 the 10.5s in the front touch the coilovers so this will not lay flat obviously the solution is we need to get the rims fitted with spacers to move it out further so it clears the coilover in the back and everything fits. However, <laughs> uh, I did not have extended studs on this car. The amount of spacer that we need is too big to work on these stock studs. I know, right? I'm actually using, you know, a creeper, like a decent human being now. These rims are 10 and a half and they're hitting the coil over with this entire setup on right now. The first thing I have to tackle is getting oversized studs on the car. That's actually not gonna be that bit of a problem because of that car. Future three rotor car has oversized studs on it. That just means that today I have to take the setup from here and just swap the studs on here. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I got to the shop early this time. It's gonna take some work, but you know what? We got it, I'm gonna figure it out because I am just so stoked that I have this angel kit on my car this soon. I can't wait to drive it. I am so motivated. We are gonna figure this out. Here they 
they are. Oversized studs, so this is gonna make everything work. Here is the stock one compared to the oversized one. This is a huge difference. This is gonna give us a lot more room to play with spacers and fitment. I borrowed a 10 millimeter spacer from DK. I'm gonna put all lug nuts on and then check underneath. Man, it is just like barely, barely touching. It is so, so close, it's annoying. I put a 10 millimeter spacer on and this time two two millimeter spacers. So in total this is 14 millimeters of spacers, and hopefully this clears it. <laughs> oh my gosh, did you from the front, dude? Compared to this side, that is yes. Damn. <laughs> you know what, at least it's not hitting the coilovers anymore. It's that is all I cared about. Damn. What do you know about that low end, Skippy? As low as my standards. <laughs> Thing. Yes, it worked. So with the total of 14 millimeters of spacers, we clear the toilovers. I'm gonna get the other side of the angle kit finished, installed so that both sides are at the same point. We know the size of spacer that we need for this size as well. I'm also gonna swap on the oversized studs here and then we'll do fitment from there. That is it, and this comes right off. And these are the oversized ones that I'm using now. We can now just finish focusing on replacing the knuckle, arm, and tie rod. One more side of the car left. Here's the old, here's the new setup. I obviously chose the completely wrong day to wear white. I know. I don't know what I was thinking. I broke like the number one rule in all garages ever. Now I just have to fit the spacers and just double check that we are good to go on this side. And then we can work fitment from both sides. And hopefully we can put this car on the ground. Oh, it's so scary. No. no. <gasps> oh, well, we gotta take it off for this too. Okay, so but it might that, be help. That, that should be money though, right? Yeah, yeah. So this side is totally good all the way to the left. Clear. No way! Wow. Dang! Uh, Holy crap! Oh Perfect. my gosh! Yes! And on this side is good too? Yeah. Oh my god, look at that camera! Yeah, you need alignment your toe is like crazy. Yeah? Another late night. I cannot believe I have a insane angel kit fully on the car. There is definitely way more camber than 
preferred for maximum grip. I don't know if you can see that. Eventually we will tone down the timbre. I think I might drift with it the way it is right now. I'm gonna be bringing the car in for an alignment tomorrow. I am so happy this install is done. Thank you so much to Martin for sending me this kit. Track day soon? Yes.